You want to know what you missed? This is what you missed. Hello lovely people of YouTube and welcome back to Mark on Life. So that's it for Real Perspective Series 2. Thank you so much for everybody who watched this series. Um, if you haven't, then I will put loads and loads of links in the description so you can go back and watch them all. And if you haven't watched any of the episodes, what have you been doing? Go back to the beginning, Series 1, watch it all, Series 2, watch it all, then come here and we can continue. So, what I thought might be a good thing to do today is to go through all the episodes of Series 2 and have a little look at them, because this series was different to Series 1. Um, series 1, every single episode was a film that I adored. The franchise, the movie, just huge fan of all of them, so I don't have to go through them as much because, you know, Terminator, Predator, all of them, I'm a massive fan of all of them. This series was slightly different because I was going for films that were on the current um, release date. So this summer season, as all summer um, movie release seasons, tons of big films, and luckily this uh, summer had lots that had sort of big back catalogues, which is why I chose them for the series of Real Perspectives. So I just wanted to go through them one by one and comment on not only the episode itself, but on the source material, what I thought of it and whether the franchise or the movie was something I actually liked. Okay, so episode one of series two was Logan. Thanks to Mark Jackson for helping me on this one. So the lighting and camera is probably better than all the other ones put together. Um, I can't believe I got my ass out in the first episode. What a weird precedent to set on this one. Although wearing the claws all day was a nightmare, thanks to Gary Scullion of Sneaky Zebra for uh, lending them to me. Really fun episode. Love playing this character. One of the most sort of cosplayed characters of all time. Wolverine, one of the coolest characters in the entire roster. In terms of the source material, um, I loved Logan. I thought it was brilliant. I will most certainly be buying the Blu-ray. I think I might treat myself to the, um, the Steelbook, which has the colour and the noir, black and white version of it. I probably won't get the 4K version, because even though I do have a 4K TV, it's super expensive. I think they're asking like £40 for the 4K Blu-ray, so I will just go for the normal one. But, and um, the X-Men franchise, I'm a massive fan of. I didn't really ever read the comics, but I love the whole series. Yes, the series has its own ups and downs. Um, the standalone Wolverine movies, slightly weaker, still with great stuff. Last X-Men movie, slightly weaker again, but still some great stuff. The modern ones, um, First Class, Days of Future Past, love them both. Um, just full of so many great characters. Really, really, really enjoy it. So this one, full, full fan of the source material. Episode two is King Kong. Um, interesting one. This one, I, well, firstly, making the episode was, I'm gonna say a nightmare every time because they were all fun, but also nightmares. This was the, the, uh, the trouble I put on myself when I decided to do a costume series. Why did I do this? Um, again, thanks to Mark Jackson for uh, lending me the costume, being in the park all day. This one, as if you've seen my vlog after the episode, was a double nightmare because the whole thing was ADR. The entire episode, the sound was all done afterwards, which I will never ever do again. Um, source material wise, I was never a fan of, of uh, King Kong, mainly because it wasn't around when I was young. The original movies, um, 1933 and in 1976, before my time, um, and they weren't a big deal when I was growing up uh, in the 80s. Um, and then obviously Peter Jackson made his in 2005, and then we have the new one. Um, I am a fan now. I watched them all and I love them all. And I, I thought the new one was actually fantastic. Um, I'm quite a big fan of sort of monster movies, kaiju movies. Um, that kind of stuff. I think the new King Kong movie was simple and I liked it for that. Same with the Godzilla movie which had a few issues but again uh, I really liked and hopefully they're going to come together nicely those two franchises. They're just such simple concepts um, and when executed well are, are fantastic. I'm actually a, I think a, uh, more of a fan of that new one than the Peter Jackson one controversially um, 
but again, I went. I'm going to go back and buy the originals on Blu-ray because they've all been nicely restored. Um, so yeah, yeah, I love King Kong now. Episode three, Power Rangers. Um, this is going to be one that sort of um, is like a bit, a bit like Marmite. People love it or hate it. I really loved the TV show when I was young. Being a kid of the uh, uh, 80s and uh, then being a teenager in the 90s, um, I watched it. I didn't watch the later series when they were ninjas and all that kind of stuff that I couldn't be asked with. But I loved the original series. Yes, it was derivative. Yes, it was exactly the same plot every single time. Monster arrives, we fight it, it goes big, we go big, we destroy it. And yes, I had the same thought as you every time. Why don't they just get in the big monster, Megazord, and just squish it when it's small? But, you know, logic is not uh, needed in this kind of situation. But it was colour, colourful, it was fun, it was silly. And, um, again, being in a spandex outfit all day was a nightmare. Um, but it was just really, really, really fun to do. Fun to be a Power Ranger. And I actually do really like the source material. Um, yeah, just a funny, silly one. Episode four, Friday the 13th. Now this is the horror that I sort of grew up with. Like I said up for King Kong, the horror that I grew up with wasn't the classic monster movies. They were before my time. I love them now, but they were before my time. The, the, the horror movies that were my era were things like Friday the 13th, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play, all that kind of stuff. Uh, although obviously the first one, uh, Friday the 13th is 1980, the year before I was born, but the whole series is in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I love them. Now, I didn't really actually watch them when I was growing up. I cut a bit here and there, but I wasn't really massively aware of the whole series properly until quite recently. Um, last year I watched every single one of them in order, and it's a really good series. Jason's such a fantastic, iconic character, and actually, uh, kind of doesn't really appear in his standard form that people see now, sort of demonic form with the the mask, until about number six. I might have got that wrong, but I think it's about number six, seven, out of a series of ten. So, yeah, I mean, they get silly at the end, obviously, when we're talking about going to Manhattan and, and then um, in space in, in, the, in the tenth one. They are, they're getting ridiculous. But they're just great. They're really fun. He's such a great character. Uh, again, playing him in the middle of a public park was not exactly um, a relaxing experience. I thought I was going to get arrested. But, um, yeah, I actually, I really like this source material as well. Um, and I recommend somebody going back and watching the whole series because it's not, it's not entirely what people think. It's a bit different. Like the first one, well, you'll see when you watch it. The second one, he appears just as a bag over his head. So it's not the character you think. Um, until later in the series, so definitely worth a watch. Episode 5, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this is a very simple one. Um, firstly, the episode was a bit more simple, back in the park again, having to find a tree that I could be in for the whole day, which was a nightmare, but more of a simplistic episode, uh, and I really loved it. Now, in terms of the source material, I love these movies. Um, massive credit to James Gunn and the entire cast, what a great movie. I mean, the Marvel, the Marvel franchise is so saturated now. There's so many of them. We know them so well now with Captain America and Thor and, and Iron Man and everything. This just came out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't read the comics. Obviously, if you've read the comics, you know all the characters anyway. I didn't. Um, and I absolutely adored it. And, and number two as well. Awesome to see Kurt Russell doing his thing. New characters all who fit the roster really nicely. Just fantastic. Just a really, really funny, genuinely funny, genuinely moving, great action, brilliant um, part of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I really, really adore this, um, this source material. Episode six and 6.5, um, Alien. Now this one would have been in series one if I, um, had a chance. I did actually, I planned that one for ages and it just sort of changed the way it was going to be. This one I just love. I mean, there's, this one is, is in my sort of top 10 of all, all, all time. Alien and the whole um, uh, franchise is a masterpiece. It just is. 
Um, again, doing the video, um, again, quite fun doing myself this little makeup um, thing. Uh, not rubbing the makeup off was a nightmare. Um, and shooting that one on my own, shooting two episodes in one day and editing the first one all in a single day was incredibly hard. Uh, and in fact, most of the episodes now are shot and ed edited in one day just by me, which is tough. But in terms of the source material, I could not be a bigger fan. I mean, particularly um, the first the first two. Um, Alien is a masterpiece. It's a, just a beautiful, simple, kind of perfectly constructed horror film. So much tension and it's so patient in the way it does it. Ridley Scott, when he's got a great script behind him, he's one of the greatest of all time. And then changing pace to Aliens, uh, Cameron making one of the greatest sci-fi action films that's ever been made. I, Aliens, again, maybe in my top five, because it's just just so rewatchable, so entertaining, such a fantastic movie. Um, then Alien 3, Fincher, one of, again, the best modern filmmakers that we have. Um, lots of problems when they made it, so it's you can see it in the film, um, the sort of, from the director's cut to the theatrical. I have tons of time for it, I love that movie, um, but I know people have an issue with it because of, um, no spoilers, of, of characters that, that are not there. So it sort of downgrades what happens at the end of the second one, but I still have lots of time for it. Fourth one, uh, Resurrection, would would be most people would agree it's sort of the weakest point um i still have some time for it i think it's some entertaining stuff but it, it doesn't really reach the heights of of the first two or even three uh, and then we come to the new ones prometheus and covenant prometheus i really really liked but i think it was lacking in some areas i think it had some problems covenant i was expecting to think the same but i actually really really liked really liked it i was it was a lot more simple um, there was a lot of criticism, which I actually didn't agree with. I thought it was great. Um, so in terms of this source of material, yeah, I, anything alien, I will pay for. I will go, I will watch, and hopefully I will one day be in. Um, yeah, love it, all the way. Episode 7, uh, The Mummy. Now, again, this is one that I didn't really have too much knowledge of. Um... Again, not my era, going right back to the um, uh, 32, the uh, Karloff original and all that series of movies. And then uh, also the the 59, the, the Cushing, British versions with um, Hammer, which is sort of the one that the episode that I did was sort of based on. Um, I, I didn't know them growing up. I, again, I do now because I went back and watched them all. Um, but they were not part of my childhood. The 99 one, Brendan Fraser was something that I was was part of my um, young life. I was not an enormous fan. I know most people seem to be, most people love that movie and, and its sequels. I just thought it was pretty good. I never thought, wow, this, this film is, is the best. But it is, but it is good. Now the modern one um, with Tom Cruise, I saw it the other week, it has its issues. I, I did like it. I think it needs a little, needed a bit of a rejig, and I do love the idea that they're going back and doing all the old creatures for the Dark Universe. That could be fantastic. I mean, the idea of doing all the Dracula and, and Frankenstein and the creature from the Black Lagoon or whatever, really great idea, but I hope they stay on course and kind of keep quality rather than sort of franchise idea, which seems to be the way forward at the moment. Uh, in terms of the episode, wrapping myself in bandages was a nightmare. Why did I want to do that? Oh my god. Even wrapping myself was hard. You think just wrapping yourself in bandages is really difficult. I also didn't like quite buy enough. So when I was getting through my head, I was like, oh god, have I got enough to do it? And then sort of spent the rest of the day not only adjusting it all day, but also ripping it to pieces as it caught on everything. Um, but it was really fun. And um, yeah, I would like to see more of the old movies and go back and see all the old sequels and stuff because they are really fun. It wasn't part of my childhood, but yeah, I'd like to see more. And finally, episode eight, Transformers. 
I actually was not the greatest fan when I was a kid. Um, I don't know why. I didn't have really any of the, the toys. Um, I had other toys. I think like Thundercats and, and other kids things. But I don't know why I just didn't connect to Transformers much. I'm not really sure. Maybe I was too young. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was early 80s. So maybe I was a bit too young. And then the Transformers, the movie coming out in 86 when I was only five years old so maybe I was a little bit too too young at that point I don't know um all the new movies starting in in 2007 from Michael Bay I've been a fan of them they they are great I mean yeah they're popcorn entertainment they are the effects are cool the action's cool and actually one thing I keep noting on these is they're quite they're they're very violent which I have no problem with but I just always like pointing it out because the things that they do to each other, these these Transformers do to each other, if you did them with a human, you would never get away with them. Extremely violent sort of sequences. But because they're robots, you can do it. So I think they, they are fun. They're great. They're cool characters. Um, I think the scripts maybe need tinkering. And I know the new one is getting some some criticism at the moment. I haven't seen it. I'm going to see it this week, hopefully. But in general, I really like them. And, um, again, I want to go back now and watch all the old cartoons so I can sort of see um, the difference. Um, but in general, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Transformers fan. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, next week, I'm going to try and do a sort of mash-up and bloopers of the series. I know I said I was going to do that today, but hopefully I'll be doing it for next week before Ghibli season begins. You can catch me on all social media. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, both Mark Joseph Actor. Um, click over here to see some more of my face. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave a comment uh, what you think of these franchises and films and everything, or any uh, movies or anything you want me to do for the next series. Share it out and subscribe to my channel to see more. Anyway, from me, Mark on Life, I'll speak to you soon.